going to get diagnosed if you do have it. I met with the sleep physician and described the problems I was having to her. She said it sounded like obstructive sleep apnea, a very common and highly treatable disorder. And that sleep study will tell us more about your interrupted sleep. Your body undergoes many physiological changes during sleep, including ones that affect your breathing. Particularly when you sleep on your back, the soft palate sags and the tongue relaxes and slides back, which can partially obstruct the upper airway. When the obstruction is severe enough to decrease the amount of air reaching the lungs, it is called a hypopnea. If the upper airway collapses, blocking the airflow by 80% or more, it is called an apnea. Hypopneas and apneas last 10 seconds or more and can greatly reduce the amount of oxygen in your blood despite your continued efforts to breathe. The most common and noticeable symptom of sleep apnea is loud chronic snoring. During an apneic episode, there is an increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the blood. This buildup triggers a defense mechanism in the brain, which jolts the body into resuming normal breathing. Usually, the person doesn't fully awaken, but merely rouses long enough to regain control of the muscles of the upper airway. The problem becomes serious when these interruptions occur so frequently that they rob you of restorative sleep. My doctor said that a sleep study was the only way we'd know for sure what was wrong with me. She told me that home sleep tests were available, but she recommended that I spend the night in a sleep lab, which could do a more comprehensive study. Bands are placed across the chest and abdomen to detect movement there. This tells us whether someone's breathing is easy or labored. Sensors on the chest keep track of heart rate and rhythm. Electrodes are put on the scalp to monitor brainwave activity. This allows us to determine whether someone is asleep or awake, and if he is asleep, what stage of sleep he is in. We measure respiration with an airflow monitor placed above the lip. A sensor on the finger tells us whether enough oxygen is entering the bloodstream. Electrodes are put on the legs to detect another condition that can disturb sleep periodic limb movement disorder. I'm good. You're great. We'll thank have you. a great night's sleep. Well, thank you very much thank for you your great. help. Great. Good night. Good night. I was in an unfamiliar bed, all wired up. I was a little anxious, but most of all, I hoped they'd be able to help me feel better. By that time, I was so exhausted, I could sleep anywhere. It was definitely strange, and I wasn't even sure I could sleep, but I had to believe it was worth it. I was desperate. I just wanted answers. <laughs>